Hello, high school basketball fans, and welcome to Jefferson High School, where tonight it's Northwest Conference action, lady style. At the top of the conference, it's going to be a Donnybrook between the Crestview Lady Knights, which bring who bring a record of 14 and two into tonight's con contest, four and one in the Northwest Conference, against the Jefferson Lady Cats, an overall record of 14 and one. Undefeated in conference action at four and zero. I've got my wingman beside me tonight, Josiah Stover, the Spencerville Bearcat of old. And tonight's contest, Josiah, it's going to be a good one. A lot of enthusiasm. It's a packed house here at Jefferson. And whoever comes away with the W tonight is definitely going to be in the driver's seat. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been excited for this game, have marked it on my calendar. Looking forward to the big matchup here between Jefferson and the Crestview Knights. You know, a lot of good things, you know, a lot of battles that are, we're going to see tonight, especially between two very good bigs and Lauren French and Maya Etzler. But you also got to talk about the co-NWC Players of the Year in Liv Lindemann coming in, scoring 24 points a game, going against her counterpart, Callie Gregory, 18.8 .8 points. So just, just all around, we should see some really good basketball tonight. Crestview brings in a scoring average of 56 points per game. They give up 31 defensively. Jefferson, 55 points offensively. 35 is what they give up on defense. Coach Mark Gregory for Crestview in his seventh year, an overall record of 141 and 49. Denise Lindemann in her fifth year leading the Delphus program, an overall record of 89 and 22. You're right, Josiah, a lot of storylines tonight. I can't wait till we see how it all unfolds. We'll come back with starting lineups after this break. It's ladies basketball, NWC style on WOSN. Welcome back to Jefferson High School again for tonight's contest between the 14 and 2 Crestview Lady Knights and 14 and 1 Jefferson Lady Cats. We'd like to thank our scoreboard sponsor tonight. Our scoreboard sponsor is Lodix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. For Mark Gregory's Crestview Lady Knights, your starters include number three, freshman Casey Gregory. She averages nine points per game. Number four, junior Ellie Klein. She is the second leading scorer for Crestview at 11 points per game. Number five, Callie Gregory. The senior averages 19 points per game and leads the Lady Knights in that category. Also for Crestview, Maya Etzler. Number 14, the senior for Crestview, averages eight points per game. And uh, rounding out the starting lineup for Crestview, number 21, junior Josie Kowicki. She averages three per game. For Denise Lindemann's Jefferson Lady Cats, they'll start four seniors and a sophomore. Starting for Jefferson, number 11, Madison Burris, a senior, she averages six points per game. Number 15, senior Liv Lindemann, leading scorer for Jefferson at 25 points per game. Number 20, senior Kristen Moore, she averages four points per game. And then number 22, sophomore Carolyn Mueller, averages four points per game. And rounding out the starting lineup for Jefferson, a senior, number 42, six foot three inches tall, Lauren French, she averages nine points per game, second leading score for the squad. We said storylines, you mentioned French and Etzler and Gregory and Lindemann. Callie Gregory, Liv Lindemann, they have led their squads in vital roles throughout their career. Tonight it's gonna to be interesting as they match up one more time on the hardwood, Josiah. 
Yeah, and we'll see. I, I, I'm going to assume there will be times that they're going to be matched up against each other, defending each other. You know, I expect Crestview to throw a couple different bodies um, at Lindemann, trying to wear her down, you know, even maybe doubling her at times just to get the ball out of her hand. But like you said, both these players have a lot of experience. They played a lot of basketball in their careers, and it should be a good one tonight. Yeah, talking uh, with Coach Lindemann before the game, she said, yeah, they have played against each other since fourth grade. So they know each other, that's for sure, as do the other seniors, especially on these two squads. We're about ready to throw it up. Our officiating crew, Ben Kramer, Dan Carnahan, Car Dan Carnahan excuse me, and Bruce Etzler. And here we go. Crestview controls the tip. Ellie Klein with the basketball, and Jefferson opens up in their patented man-to-man -man defense. Josiah, I think it's key for Callie Gregory to get things going as Casey puts a shot up right there. The rebound is loose, and here comes Lindemann with the basketball. They run down the floor, the left-handed shot from number 22, Carolyn Mueller. She overcooks it, but there's Lindemann, Johnny on the spot with the offensive rebound. Yeah, Jefferson wants to get the ball up as quickly as they as they can, and it's nice as Liv Lindemann, one of your leading rebounders on the team as your guard, you know, as the one setting the pace of the game, and she gets the ball out, and another wide open shot in the corner by Kirsten Moore. But it looks like we got a foul, maybe a push in the back. So ball goes back to Crestview. First foul is going to be called on Carolyn Mueller on the offensive glass. And if you're Coach Lindemann, you're not upset with that aggressive foul on the offensive glass trying to rebound the basketball. No, and, and you want, when you got players like Liv Lindemann on your team, the other players are going to have some open shots. And we got to see that tonight is can these role players for this Jefferson team knock down some shots, make Crestview focus a little bit more on them and less on Lindemann? There's Ellie Klein with a shot. She misses. Callie Gregory misses from ground zero. And Lauren French with the rebound. Lindemann with the basketball. Crestview in a unique defense where Lindemann gets a wide open look with the high ball screen. And she buries it. Lynn Lindemann dents the scoreboard first. She has 35 threes on the year now and leads the club shooting 47% from out there. Callie Gregory down low. It's going to be an offensive foul. So that could be a storyline, Josiah. Crestview cannot afford to have Callie Gregory get in foul trouble. No, and you can see what Crestview's trying to do is use Callie Gregory's size there in the paint, try to get her some shots there early. Jefferson did a good job of collapsing on her, you know, not reaching, not putting their hands down through the offensive contact. There's a shot on the right wing from deep by Madison Burris. And a second foul, and it's on Gregory. And that is two fouls on Callie Gregory. And Coach Mark Gregory is going to take her out. So I really felt that Callie Gregory would need to have a good start for Crestview, and it's been anything but. Two fouls, no points. And on the inbound play, Jefferson finds Carolyn Mueller wide open underneath. They lead 5-0 to zero on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Yeah, and as you said, that will be the storyline, at least here in the first half. How much does Coach Gregory let his daughter sit out of this game, and can this Crestview offense find ways to score without her on the floor? And opportunity now, number three, her sister, Casey Gregory, down low, gets an opportunity to go to the free throw free throw line and knock down some points for this Crestview Knight team. The first foul called on Jefferson this evening, or excuse me, second foul, that goes to Madison Burris, her first team second. Casey Gregory at the free throw line. She shoots 71% from the line. Comes up empty on the first look. Crestview yet to dent the scoring column. See if Gregory can do it right here. Second one's up, and it is good on the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Least famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Best view again. Two guards out front, focused on Lindemann. Looks like a 2-3 defense, but it's really stretched out. There's an open look in the corner, and Carolyn Mueller makes good from deep. Three ball, corner pocket. Ellie Klein looks to return the favor, unable to come up with the bucket. Lauren French with the defensive rebound. Here come the Jeff Cats. 
Well, and that was a big shot there by Carolyn Mueller. As I said, is can some of these other players knock down some shots, force Crestview to be a little more honest on the defensive end? As you said, they're kind of out in that 2-3 zone there, but they're all the way out on the volleyball line trying to stop Liv Lindemann. And another big bucket there by Matty Burris. A great start for Jefferson. Coach Gregory's got to think about a timeout. Our timeout sponsors Metzger Financial Service. As the Lady Knights take a timeout, we'll take one as well. Jefferson with the 11-1 lead here early on WOSN. Our timeout sponsor this evening is Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future, call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So again, Josiah, a great start by Jefferson. Not only 11 to one lead, they have Callie Gregory with two fouls. Coach Gregory puts her back in off the timeout. And Callie passes to Casey. She gets to the rack, draws the foul, and that's gonna be on Lauren French. That'll be her first, team's third. Casey Gregory going back to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw Line. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. Well, you saw Coach Gregory on that timeout get a Cali right back into the game, knowing, you know, it can't let this lead expand anymore here. You know, we'll see how, you know, on the, on the defensive end, does that affect her? She's got to really watch it. Doesn't want to pick up that third foul here in the first quarter. If coach puts her out on the wing and, you know, hopefully try to protect her a little bit. It's a 2-3 zone up above the volleyball line. A lot of attention being paid to Liv Lindemann. And so far, Liv's teammates have made Crestview pay here in the first quarter. But there's a turnover. Here comes Casey Gregory. She's going to look to go to the rack. And Casey Gregory, she's done all the scoring for Crestview thus far. Picks up the first field goal for the Lady Knights. Jefferson leads 11 to 5 halfway through the first quarter. Lindemann with the basketball. Again, the Crestview coaching staff has picked something up in the sense that they're putting that 2 3 zone real high. And Lauren French with the miss. So early on, Jefferson has taken advantage of it, but now Crestview looking to bounce back. Casey Gregory goes to the rack again. A little bit of contact, but the ball goes off her hands, out of bounds. It'll be Jefferson basketball. Yeah, Jefferson did a good job there, just holding their ground. The official saw Casey Gregory just take a little bit too much, maybe jumped in a little bit too far without jump stopping and found herself in a tough spot and turned the ball over. And Jefferson now has an opportunity here to try to extend this lead. Six-point lead for Jefferson, and that's going to be a turnover. Off the hands of Carolyn Mueller. So the timeout thus far has been beneficial for Crestview. Jefferson hasn't scored since that timeout, and Crestview seems to be establishing themselves a little bit more on defense. They need to get Callie Gregory involved. She's got the deep look off the glass, doesn't go. Lindemann with the rebound, and here she comes. She knows what to do. The Lady Knights stop off the penetration, but they swing it nicely. Good shot from the left wing from Burst, doesn't go. Here comes Crestview. Yeah, and a good look there by the Jefferson offense. We saw the ball swing to about three different players. Found the open shooter, just wasn't able to knock it down. Maya Etzler with the offensive rebound, and she's going to be fouled. And that foul is going to go to number 21. That's Claire Brinkman. Lauren French, she missed six games here with an ankle injury, and that was an opportunity for the freshman, Claire Brinkman, to get some time. She averages five points per game, according to, and in talking with Coach Lindemann, Claire Brinkman has been the most improved player for Jefferson this year, and it was trial by fire. She had to come in, Josiah, when French went down. 
Yeah, and this Jefferson team is, though, there's a big difference when Lauren French is on the bench, you know, especially just that size and that presence she has there in the paint. She's a very good rebounder. She tracks the ball really well. As you can see, Coach Lindemann getting her right back into the game, seeing Crest get a couple offensive rebounds. My Etzler goes two for two from the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Lindemann from deep doesn't go. Crestview in transition. Ellie Klein overcooks it from ground zero. It goes out of bounds. It's going to be Jefferson basketball. Great opportunity for Crestview to cut it to two, unable to do so. Lindemann with the basketball. Just so many similarities between Liv Lindemann and Callie Gregory. We'll look to talk more about that as we go along. So many similarities between these two programs. Jefferson, 15 Northwest Conference Championships. Crestview, 17 Northwest Conference Championships. Jefferson on a 24-game Northwest Conference winning streak. Who was their last loss to? Crestview in 2021. There's Callie Gregory playing with two fouls, picks up a field goal, and the Lady Knights have handled that initial spurt by Jefferson to cut the lead to two. Yeah, Ooh. Crestview on the 7-0 run here out of that timeout. That was a big timeout by Coach Gregory, down 11 to two. And now we see it here as Jefferson gets another open shot. Good look, just not able to knock it down. Yeah, good clean look by Madison Burris, just trickles off the rim. Callie Gregory finds teammate Hallie McCoy open on the block. She gets fouled. Again, that foul is on number 22, Carolyn Mueller, her second. And Haley McCoy is going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throw line. And Crestview is in the two-shot foul bonus as well. Haley McCoy makes that first one. And the free throw line has been good to Crestview. That's how they have fought their way back into this game, going six for seven. Make it six for eight as that one rolls out again on the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Liv Lindemann with the basketball. Josie Kawicki guarding her. In that 2-3 zone that's up above the volleyball line. Susceptible to offensive rebounds, but that has not hurt Crestview thus far in the game. No, they've had four turnovers on Jefferson here in this first quarter. So forcing Jefferson now to figure out how to attack this high 2-3 zone, as you said. Liv had that first shot. Looked like they're going to call a foul on Haley McCoy there. Haley McCoy picks up her first personal foul. The third team foul for Crestview here in the first quarter will be under out of bounds. Yeah, Crestview didn't change their philosophy defensively coming out of that timeout. It was just a little bit of let's settle down, a little bit of a check up from the neck up. Liv Lindemann, Josie Kwicki there on the catch gets a hand on that one. French with the basketball at the free throw line. Good luck in the corner. Three ball, corner pocket for number 20, Kristen Moore. She averages four points per game. A big one there to get Jefferson off that number 11, which they were stuck on for most of the uh, quarter after the timeout. 22 seconds, Maya Etzler coming back in the game for McCoy. Will Crestview go for one shot here, Josiah, or are they gonna take something if they see it earlier? Yeah, I think they'll try to get the ball into Callie Gregory, you know, wherever she can. I imagine, especially if they get a layup here, it's almost looked like Ellie Klein could have just went to the rim if she had taken one more dribble there, but decides to jump stop and turns the ball over. But now Jefferson has an opportunity here up four. See if they can get a shot to try to extend this lead. And with 10 seconds to go, they have it in the hands of who they want it in. We'll see if she just keeps it looking looking to come off a double screen up top, but she shoots it from deep. Nothing there. Your first quarter ends with Jefferson on top, 14 to 10. A lot of action, and we got a lot more to come. Ladies basketball, Northwest Conference on WOSN.
We'd like to thank our quarter sponsor for tonight's game. It's Rickard Lawn and Landscape. Contact Rickard Lawn and Landscape for all your lawn care needs, including fertilization and weed control programs, aerating, hydro seeding, irrigation service, installation, and more. Rickard Lawn and Landscape. And I'm also going to say they're our trivia question sponsor. We talked about Lindemann and Gregory. Both of them have the record of highest scored uh, single game scoring for their teams. Uh, Gregory had a game as a sophomore where she scored 43. Liv Lindemann scored 40 against Allen East this year for that record. Liv Lindemann is the all-time leading scorer for Jefferson now with over 1,400 points. Callie Gregory is 113 away from that honor for Crestview. She's got to uh, catch uh, uh, an all-star from back in the 80s for the Knights. My trivia question, Josiah, who did Liv Lindemann surpass? And who is Callie Gregory chasing for Crestview? And if people want to answer this, they can get on Twitter or X and at Dave Bowen, number seven, and they can guess here too in the early going and we'll see what we get. I'll let you think about it. We'll look for an answer in the second half. So furious transition action. Neither team able to score in their first possession. Lindemann looking to attack. Crestview defends it without fouling. We're in transition now. Callie Gregory from behind the arc thinks about it, gets the offense set up. And then she attacks, gets by French. Hoop and the har for Callie Gregory. And that's going to be Lauren French's second personal foul of the game. Callie Gregory looking to attack, does so. Going to the free throw line with the three point play opportunity, the old fashioned way, the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Again, locations in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Home style happens here. Yeah, it could be another storyline with Lauren French with two fouls. Coach Lindemann decides to keep her in the game. Just going to have to play smart here for the remaining seven minutes. Kirsten Moore with another big three. That's the fifth three already on the night for the Jefferson Wildcats. The Crestview coaching staff is saying, Liv Lindemann, you are not going to beat us with your outside shot. Well, as a result, one, two, three, four other uh, players, three other players have scored four threes for Jefferson. Lindemann has one, but yeah, Burris has a three. Lindemann has one three. Moore has two threes, and Mueller has a three. Teammates stepping up for Jefferson. Yeah, it's really been the difference in the game here so far. As I said, Jefferson five threes on the night. Crestview hasn't had an attempt, or only one attempt from beyond the arc there in that first quarter. So it's really been the difference here. A lot more free throws for the Crestview team. Jefferson hidden from behind the arc. Crestview staying in that two three zone. It'll be interesting to see if Coach Gregory changes just to see how things play a little bit. But right now, giving Jefferson the outside look, and they are converting with the 17-13 lead. Josie Kowicki gets a hand on that one. It will be sideline out of bounds for the Lady Cats. Liv Lindemann from deep. Nothing but cotton for Liv Lindemann. And she now has six points in the game off of two three-pointers. Uh, she's so difficult to defend when she's knocking down shots from that deep. And Callie Gregory says, if you can do it, I can do it also. Point, counterpoint. Again, these two have played against each other since fourth grade. And this is what we thought we would see with this storyline. And it is coming to fruition. Jefferson in their half-court offense against the 2-3 zone defense. There's a steal by Ellie Klein. Ellie Klein looks to go from L.A. to Boston, coast to coast, and she scores it. Ellie Klein with her first bucket of the game. Second leading score on this Crestview Lady Knight squad, 11 points per game. Nice look for Lindemann. Three ball corner pocket, does it go. Callie Gregory with the board. Here comes Klein again. As you said, she gave it up one time, does it that time. But it's an offensive foul called against Ellie Klein. That's her first personal, and that is the first personal foul for Crestview in the second quarter. Jump stop, but still went into the defender. Great defense by Jefferson right there to draw the offensive charge. Yeah, and the official was standing right there, saw the entire thing. You know, Jefferson player didn't move, just stood straight up, waited for the contact to happen. 
took the charge. Now allow for Jefferson to see if they can extend this two-point lead. The quarterback, Liv Lindemann, with the basketball. Ellie Klein on her. Three-pointer from the left hand. Doesn't go for Mueller. Maya Essler with the board. Callie Gregory brings it across the timeline. It's been a really good game thus far. Just what we expected, Josiah. They go into Etzler. Etzler off two feet, off the window, and the bucket. Maya Etzler, second leading field goal percentage shooter for Crestview at 52%. Gets her first bucket of the day to go with two free throws. She has four halfway through the second quarter. Yeah, Maya Etzler did a great job of getting a board on the defensive end there and then post up on the offensive and makes a strong move. And now we got a foul on Crestview. Casey Gregory picks up the personal. That's her first team second. Jefferson will have the ball sideline out of bounds at the 28 foot mark. All tied up at 20s. Liv Lindemann with the basketball. The coach's daughter, the assistant coach's daughter, Denise and Bob Lindemann, the coaching team for Jefferson. Lindemann shakes and bakes, doesn't get the shot, but is fouled by Haley McCoy, and I think Dan Carnahan may have called it after the shot he did, so it's a common foul, doesn't go in as Jefferson was going to have possession after that shot, whether the ball went in or not. Haley McCoy picks up the personal, her second. Team's third. Looks like we have the officials just making sure. Yeah, I'm gonna pull them up. You know, we've talked about the new rule about shooting two after five fouls each quarter. Another rule that has escaped a lot of people, when you have a, a violation uh, uh, a foul or turnover, uh, a dead ball turnover, you take it out at the 28 foot mark or under the basket. You don't take it out where the, the foul occurred anymore. There's a shot by Jefferson. Crestview comes away with the rebound. Gregory with the basketball. Again, it's been man to man all night long for Jefferson. It's been 2 3 zone all night long for Crestview. Kennedy Kreider touches the ball back to Callie Gregory. She looks to shake and bake. Good defense by Tristan Moore. They go into Maya Etzler, gets her feet set off the window and in for Maya Etzler. Picks up her second field goal, fifth and sixth point on the night. Crestview takes their first lead of the game, 22 to 20. 2.40 to go in the second quarter on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Yeah, we see Maya Etzler kind of putting herself in that paint with Lauren French on the bench, knowing she has the size advantage. They found her two times in a row, and she's been able to knock down both buckets. Callie Gregory with the basketball off the Lindemann miss. She goes with the shot, doesn't get it. Kennedy tried her aggressive, but she goes over the back of Madison Burris. Good checkout by Burris. Kennedy Kreider picks up the personal, her first, team's fourth. Callie Gregory, Liv Lindemann, both have been first team NWC players throughout their career. That'll be the case again this year. They, as you mentioned earlier, both uh, NWC players of the year last year. The year before as a sophomore, Liv Lindemann was player of the year. Uh, both second team all Ohio last year, both single game scoring record holders at the respective schools. It's just amazing the similarities. With the turnover, here comes Ellie Klein. Jump stops again. Good block again, good defense by Burris. Lindemann looks to go coast to coast, and it's a blocking call. I believe that's Casey Gregory who didn't get there quite in time, or is that ha Haley McCoy? Yes, Casey Gregory. And good sportsmanship there by Lynn Lindemann, checking on Gregory. She shook up a little bit. They're going to take Casey out of the game. 
And Lynn Lindeman, you got to be ready to go because she's coming to the rack. Nothing personal, just good competitiveness there. Liv Lindemann going to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw Line. Call Lee's for your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Home Style happens here. The first one up, it does not go for Lindemann, the second leading free throw shooter for Jefferson at 79%. She's got another one to stick through the net, and she does. Yeah, and I think the official made the right call on that play. Um, you know, the Crestview player not able to get her feet set with Liv Linden being so quick. As we see here on the steal, gets the ball back, attacks the rim. And the official calls a travel. Liv Lindeman picks that one from Ellie Klein. Ellie Klein, a really, really strong point guard for Crestview as far as taking care of the rack. But Lindeman saw something and she took advantage of it. Just a high basketball IQ. Ellie Klein's got to take care of the rock a little bit better. She does so, gets it to Callie Gregory. Gregory off the pick, doesn't go. Kennedy Kreider gets a rebound, goes into Etzler, and she's going to be fouled. And if that's on Lauren French, it's going to be number three, Dan Carnahan with the call. It is not on French. It is on her teammate, Liv Lindemann, and she's happy to take that personal foul for her teammate because that's only Liv's first foul of the game. Yeah, that would have been big if for Crestview if Lauren French would have had to go onto the bench with uh, three fouls. But Liv Lindemann call with the foul and Maya Etzler comes in, shoots 72% from the free throw line, misses the first one. Two for three in the game thus far. Etzler at the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Eyes, flies, misses both of them. Kennedy Kreider with the rebound. But we're going to have a foul called. And that foul is going to go against. I believe that's going to be on Carolyn Mueller. Yeah, he called it on number 22, but he pointed toward like it was Jefferson's basketball. He got it right because Kreider had the rebound and um, Mueller was on the floor and Kreider fell over her. So good job by the officiating crew, just pointed the wrong direction initially. Yeah, and once again, you know, very veteran crew we have here. Did a good job of talking to each other, figuring it out, made the right call. And now Crestview will have an opportunity up one with a minute nine to go to see if they can extend this lead as look like we had a switch. Yeah, Kristen Moore, the maximum role player for Jefferson on Gregory. Maya Etzler with the 15-footer doesn't go. Casey Gregory back in the game. Here comes Lindemann. Nice job by Josie Kowicki to get in front of her, but Liv Lindemann does what Liv Lindemann does. Hits the bucket from eight feet, puts Jefferson back up top by one. Yeah, just such a tough player to defend. Can shoot from all the way out, you know, from the volleyball line, but then stop on a dime and knock down a shot as she just did there. Casey Gregory, the freshman, Bulldogs her way to the basket, goes over the 6-3 French. Give Casey Gregory the bucket. And Liv Lindemann, again, the quarterback for Jefferson. She's going to take the ball at half court. Jefferson's going to get the last shot of the quarter if she has anything to do with it. Here she comes. Just inside the three-point line. It's short. Josie Kowicki with the rebound. From half court, Callie Gregory raises the front of the rim and it's been an outstanding first half of basketball crestview with the lead on the lotix jewelry scoreboard 24 to 23 you're watching it all on WOSN. Welcome back to Jefferson High School. It's halftime. Crestview leads Jefferson 24-23. And our scoring for the first half for Crestview, Callie Gregory leads the way with eight points. And for Jefferson, Liv Lindemann and Kirsten Moore both have six. Some statistics other than the leading scores for the first half, Josiah. Yeah, looking at the visiting team coming in, they, they shot 39% from the field in that first half. 
the big difference, you know, shot 11 free throws there in that first half compared to Jefferson's only two. They made seven out of 11 from beyond the arc. Though Crestview only one from four, 25% in that first half from beyond the arc compared to Jefferson who shot 18 threes in that first half, made six of them, so 33%. As I said, Jefferson only one for two from the free throw line coming in, had six turnovers there in that first half compared to Crestview only had three. Yeah, I think in the second half here, halftime adjustments, Obviously, Jefferson's going to be talking about that 2-3 zone. Crestview, typically a man-to-man -man defensive team. They have shown 2-3 zone the first half. They've had some good looks. What do you think Coach Lindemann's talking about how to attack that 2-3? Yeah, I think they got to find a way to, to get live, you know, roaming around, especially on that baseline, especially how high that Crestview is playing that 2-3 zone. You know, they're using that length that they have um, to really pressure these smaller guards for Jefferson, you know, for Liv, it's been difficult. She's had to shoot, you know, made some big buckets from, you know, almost the volleyball line there. But, you know, can they move her around a little bit, get the ball reversed a couple times, break into those cracks inside that 2-3 zone for her? And, you know, for Crestview, I think, you know, for them, just keep doing what they're doing. You know, it started out, you know, Jefferson, that 11-2 run they had right at the beginning of the game. And for Crestview coming in, you know, they fought their way back, attacked the rim, got to the free throw line, tried to find ways if they can get into Maya Etzler, see if they use that, try to get another foul on Lauren French. I think you've nailed it, Josiah. I think Crestview, uh, they need to look to get the ball into Etzler a little bit more, put the pressure on French. We talked about that matchup being a key tonight. Etzler has six. French yet to dent the scoring column, the second leading score for Jefferson at nine points per, nine points per game. And Crestview picks something up on film with putting a lot of defensive pressure at the top of the key on Lindemann. And you're right, if Coach Lindemann can move her around a little bit, that might create issues for the Crestview defense. Yeah, and every time Liv gets rid of the ball, you know, she's always got somebody on her. But if they can get her moving around, find some more gaps in that 2-3 zone, I think they'll have a little bit more success there in the in the second half. Real quick, our JV score, our game tonight, the score was 23-19 in favor of Jefferson. Crestview goes right into Maya Etzler, and she scores from point blank range, uses the window nicely. I always love it when post players use the glass, Josiah. You did that so effectively as a player. Maya Etzler does it right there. So Jefferson with the basketball. Crestview staying in the 2-3 zone. A look from the wing by Claire Brinkman, who is in the game to start the third quarter. The Lady Cats come up empty. Crestview with the basketball, three-point lead. Jefferson again in their patented man-to-man. -man. Mueller on Callie Gregory. Ellie Klein. Kowicki goes into Callie Gregory. She goes off glass, rolls off. Maya Etzler gets a hand on it, tips it out. Gregory with another look. Callie Gregory doesn't miss the second time, but again, you got to give Maya Etzler some kudos. She got a hand on that ball. She was checked out, able to tip it away, and her teammate gets it and scores. Yeah, she gave her team an extra possession there, and those are big. You know, especially with that size advantage, Jefferson has to find ways as a team to box out and get those loose balls, not allow Crestview, you know, especially with this really good offensive players that they have, give them extra looks at the rim. You nailed it offensively on this possession. Liv Lindemann not at the top. She's running the baseline. Coach Gregory was like, you got to find her, girls. They did, but not in enough time for Jefferson to continue the possession and rotate it around. Lauren French gets fouled. She's going to go to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. That personal foul is on Crestview's Maya Etzler. That's just her first foul of the game. French, the leading free throw shooter for Jefferson at 88%, makes good on the first one. And she's going to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line with the second. Nothing but the bottom of the net. And we have a whistle and a sub coming in off of the made free throw. So 
beginning of the third quarter, the adjustments we talked about, both, both staffs put him in play. Lindemann off the point. Crestview getting the ball into Etzler early. Both have been successful doing so. Casey Gregory with the ball in the wing to Ellie Klein. She looks to penetrate, goes to her left. Unable to come up with it. Josie Kowicki with the board. Maya Etzler gives it up. Out to Casey Gregory, the freshman. Not faced by the big game as she now has 10 points and is the leading scorer here early in the third quarter for Crestview. Yeah, and only the second three of the night for Crestview, but that's a big one now to extend this lead to six. And we see Liv, as you said, coming off some of those screens now. Big board there by French, goes up strong and finishes. Nicely done, hits the offensive glass, rakes it and bakes it, gets two for herself. Crestview with the basketball. Ellie Klein, down to Gregory on the block again. Has the height advantage on Kristen Moore, Case, or Callie Gregory with the bucket. Good defense by Moore, just better offense by Gregory. Yeah, Callie Gregory so strong there in the post. You know, we've seen her already knock down a step back three, but likes to use that size advantage in the post. You know, going to her right and then comes back to the left. And a big bucket there to extend this lead and almost a turnover, but oh, and there was the turnover. Casey Gregory on the breakout. Liv Lindemann gets back defensively, but Gregory is able to stop and pop, and Coach Lindemann is going to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout with our Metzger Financial Services timeout sponsor as well. Third quarter action, NWC style on WOSN. Timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you play your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Josiah Stober, Dave Bowen, timeout Jefferson as Crestview extends the lead now to eight points. Coach Lindemann with the timeout. They made some adjustments at halftime, but... Sometimes when you make those adjustments, you got to be careful that you don't create paralysis by analysis. And I do think the Jefferson offense has slowed down a little bit. They got to get back to doing what they do. Yeah, and I like to see, you know, Liv kind of initiate the offense and then force Crestview to have to defend her off the run. We see a little bit different. Now she's not starting with the ball up top, kind of running that baseline, coming off of screens there. So, you know, want to make Crestview, you know, just sit down and defend her initially, and we'll see her now bringing the ball up the court, kind of getting that offensive going, and then move off of that first pass. You're exactly right. Liv Lindemann with the basketball up top. She's going to stay up top after she releases it, and they've got a wide open look, a big, nice three-pointer from the left wing. Madison Burris picks up her second three, and that's just what the doctor ordered if you're a Jefferson fan. Casey Gregory with the look on the other side. Maya Etzler offensive rebound. Casey goes to the board blocked by Lindemann. And the ball goes out of bounds. And it's gonna go to Jefferson. Both student sections in the corner standing. Great student representation by both schools. They know how big this game is for these girls. Jefferson, they win it, they're in the driver's seat. Crestview wins it, they put themselves in a tie for first place with Jefferson and Columbus Grove. Jefferson and Columbus, Columbus Grove yet to play this season. Allen East right behind both, all three squads with two losses. There's another big three. Madison Burris stepping up for Coach Lindemann and the Lady Cats. 6-0 run. Two-point lead for Crestview. Well, I like that. Liv initiated the offense, ran through, and Crestview, two of their girls, ran after her, which then left Maddie Burris wide open for another three. Looks like we got a foul there on Jefferson, but these, these role players stepping up for Jefferson, knocking down these big shots. Gregory to Gregory, give and go action. Casey's going to go to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line as the foul is on the freshman for Jefferson, Claire Brinkman. That's her second. 
Gregory with the miss on the first free throw. Again, we talked about that trivia question, which Ricker Lawn and Landscape is sponsoring. The leading score that Liv Linderman has surpassed career-wise and the leading score for Crestview that Callie Gregory is chasing. That's who we're looking for right now. Liv Linderman penetrates the gap. Nice stop and look by Mueller. She kicks it back out, rotates it back around to Lindemann. Jefferson, much more fluid coming mm. out of that timeout offensively. Yeah, absolutely. And with those big shots by Maddie Burris, now Crestview's having to step out. We're giving a little bit more space now for Liv Lindemann to see if she can attack these gaps. Burris looking from three right there. Gives it up. Gets it back via the loose ball, but now back in Lindemann's hands. There's a flare screen on the back side. Oh, nicely done. Penetration and pass. French unable to come up with the bucket. Callie Gregory on the breakout. Jefferson back defensively. The Euro step. Give it to Callie Gregory. And she picks up her 13th and 14th point of the game. She leads all scores right now. Yeah, so difficult to stop, especially in transition. You know, has really good body control there. As you said, that Euro step, to step past the defender, goes up, knocks down the two for the Knights to extend this lead to four. Jefferson had a 10-point lead early. Crestview came back. Crestview had an eight-point lead. Jefferson came back. Crestview in transition. Klein to Josie Kowicki. It's a good bucket. And Mark Gregory's going to take a timeout with that made bucket by the maximum role player for Crestview, Joseph Kowicki. We'll take a timeout as well. 39-33 Crestview on WOSN. Welcome back to Jefferson High School. Third quarter action, Coach Mark Gregory takes the timeout off the main bucket to go up six. He's down there coaching his girls and Coach Lindemann, she's doing the same thing. Both these schools have a tremendous amount of respect for each other, Josiah. They both know how big this game is as we go down the stretch in conference play. Yeah, and Coach Gregory, understanding, you know, just made a big basket, motions are high, wants to calm down his team, make sure they're set defensively to see with a minute 47 if they can get another stop and try to extend this six-point lead. We've got Jacob O'Neill on camera. To my left, we have Brentley Lindemann doing the camera, the filming for Jefferson. He's the nephew of Coach Denise and Bub Lindemann for Jefferson. And then we've got our stat guys helping us out for quarter breaks information in Steve Holden and Brad Hughes. Lindemann with the ball in the paint. Looks to attack, no foul. Here comes Callie Gregory. Jefferson back in transition defense. Nicely done. Goes into Maya Etzler. She drop steps, goes window, and scores. Maya Etzler has been really good tonight of not rushing. She's been under control in the paint. Jefferson with the basketball. Crestview back up to an eight-point lead, their biggest lead they've had of the contest. Maya Etzler blocks that shot. Madison Burris has had the three look. She up faked out there. Crestview had to honor that three because she's got three of them on the night. But Maya Etzler rotated over nicely in that two-three zone. Jefferson maintains possession. Under a minute to go here in the third quarter. And this one has lived up to the billing. Callie Gregory with a steal on the inbound. She and Liv go at it. Callie Gregory maintains possession. I'd like to see those two guarding each other more, but with Crestview in the zone, we're not going to see it. Callie Gregory goes to the rock and gets the hoop and the harm. The foul is on Jefferson's number 20, I believe. And that is Kristen Moore. That is her first foul of the game. And Callie Gregory is going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line and look to pick up the hoop. 
in the heart, and she does so. Callie Gregory now with 17. Yeah, and we just see a lot of confidence from this Crestry team taking the ball to the rim, attacking it between Etzler and Gregory. Both of them have been attacking the rim. Another open shot, a good board there by Lauren French, and Liv Lindemann on the backside puts in two for her team. Lindemann cleans it up as French with the offensive rebound, unable to connect. Liv Lindemann on the weak side gets it done. She looks to play defense, and she does. She gets the steal, second one on Ellie Klein tonight. And they're going to call a block on Ellie Klein. Trying to get back in transition defense. Close to travel, but the contact happened first. Klein picks up her second personal foul. Under out of bounds for Jefferson. Clawing their way back in from a nine-point deficit. Five seconds to go. Lindemann's going to get the ball. Attacks the rim. Maya Etzler gets a piece of it. Goes out of bounds. 1.3. I wouldn't be surprised Lindemann gets another quality look here at the end of the quarter. Yeah, you can see they switched her out here. She's coming off. At about Josie three. Kowicki gets a hand on it. And that's going to do it for our third quarter. Crestview with a big third quarter. Extends their lead with the eight-point advantage in the third. 44-35. You're watching it all on WOSN. Welcome back to Jefferson High School, where after three quarters, Crestview leads 44-35. A big third quarter for the Lady Knights. 20 points on their side of the ledger. Jefferson with 12. Crestview stayed in that 2-3 zone. Jefferson made some adjustments, struggled with them initially, then it worked for them, and then Crestview had a little push at the end of the quarter. What do the stats tell us, Josiah? Yeah, a big quarter, as you said, for Crestview. Nine for 14 in that Third quarter, 64% from the field, one for three from the free throw line. Only had one turnover, six rebounds. And for Jefferson, only two for six from the two, and two for five from beyond the arc. Two big threes by Batty Burris as she steps up again. Almost knocks down another one for the Wildcats. Good clean look, I'm able to connect, but a good shot by Burris. Callie Gregory with the ball up top, being guarded closely by Kirsten Moore. Maya Etzler with her first miss of the game, I believe, in there. Gets her own rebound, and she goes off glass again. A big night for Maya Etzler. Now with 12 points, averages eight a game for Crestview. Well, you can just see the confidence by Maya Etzler. Not going to be denied, even if she missed the first shot. Goes up, gets her own rebound, attacks the rim. We've seen that a couple times tonight. I know Coach Gregory has fought a couple games this year not being tough there in the paint. We're seeing it tonight. Absolutely. There's a foul out on the perimeter by Ellie Klein. That's going to be her third team's first here in the fourth quarter. You're right. Crestview has played much, much better inside than they have at times this, this year. And again, the last two years, Jefferson has won this game. That's a motivation for Crestview. Also, Crestview had a loss against Allen East. They already have one league loss. If they want to have anything to do with the conference, they have to win this game. Liv Lindemann going to do what she can to bring her Jeff Cats back. But Crestview's motivated. Liv Lindemann with the shot doesn't go. And here comes Callie Gregory. Yeah, we see the Crestview coaching staff telling them to slow down a little bit recognizing the 11-point lead right now. We don't have to rush anything. Goes Callie in Gregory. and out, but there's Maya Etzler again with the offensive rebound. Does it go? Nice rebound by the freshman, Claire Brinkman. Lindemann with the basketball. Down in the corner, three-ball corner pocket. Doesn't go for Carolyn Mueller. Callie Gregory again with the basketball. Ellie Klein. She goes in with the left hand, doesn't go. Maya Etzler with the rebound, and she scores again. Give her 14 points now. A big night for Maya Etzler. Yeah, just really dominating that paint, even on the offensive end. 
That shot goes up, using her size advantage, getting the rebound, and Liv Lindemann thought maybe a little bit of contact there, but officials didn't call anything, and Crestview now see if they can extend this 13-point lead. She got a nice screen by Kirsten Moore, but yeah, might have been a little contact. Crestview goes right back inside to Maya Etzler. Liv Lindemann gets a hand on the dribble. And here she comes from the elbow. Stops, pops, doesn't go. Callie Gregory. Transition basketball. Gregory going to go one on three. And she draws contact. And she's going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. That fouls on Madison Burris, her second. Team's first of the fourth quarter. The Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. Coach Mark Gregory, he's going to take a, his third time out of the game. We'll take one with him. High school basketball, lady style on WOSC. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future, call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Callie Gregory makes good on the first free throw. Our trivia question, Josiah, who has Liv Lindemann supplanted as the leading scorer all time for Jefferson? Yeah, and that's Brooke Bowers, scored 1,400 career points. Graduated in 2006 for this Wildcats team. As you said, lots of points put up by Brooke Bowers, but Liv Lindemann this year has surpassed her. And, you know, the mention is, you know, having three of the Lindemans all on that scoreboard. As Carolyn Mueller picks up the field goal, nice passing in the interior by Jefferson. It's been tough to get points down there with that sticky 2-3 zone. But yes, Liv Lindemann, just an outstanding career. All-time leading scorer. Now, Callie Gregory, she's working to become the all-time leading scorer at Crestview. And we have a held ball tie-up here. And I believe it's going to be Jefferson basketball. Before your time, during my time, Crestview had a, a young lady graduated in 1985 by the name of Jackie Motika. Jackie Mossing now. Jackie Matika was a key component of the Crestview Lady Knights that went to the Final Four in 1985. She has 1,742 points. Coming into this game, Callie was 113 behind. It is achievable for her yet this year. Jackie Matika went on to play at Bowling Green State University, and her number was retired there. So she had a great career at BG. Lauren French looking to attack right there, doesn't get the bucket, but Jefferson maintains possession. And we've seen Jefferson in the last couple of possessions try to get it inside, whether it's to a cutting player or Lauren French, as Lauren French continues to battle against Maya Etzler. Mueller with the look over there, or excuse me, Burris with the look, just not in rhythm right there, tough shot. Crestview with the 13-point lead. Now's where they're, they're going to want to be patient. Coach Gregory's asking them to spread it and look for driving lanes. Ellie Klein says, I'm not going to be patient. She doesn't get the bucket. No, no travel. It's two Jefferson players fell into each other. And Kirsten Moore, she's struggling a little bit there, but she's up now as the official stop play. Really, French and Moore just sort of ran into each other right there. But Jefferson will maintain possession. Good timeout by the officials. Get every, everybody uh, in a position where, where we can continue to play and take care of any injury that might have occurred there. So, yeah, Moore came out of the game. Nice job using the dead spot. That's what Jefferson used on their last possession. And a traveling occurs there on Kaya Kimmett. Crestview will have the basketball with 3.13 to play in the fourth quarter. Crestview just has had a spurt here in the back half of the third beginning of the fourth quarter to go up 13. 
and that's made it tough on this Jefferson uh, squad. Coach Mark Gregory, he's going to take a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here. Next games, Jeff or Crestview will play Shawnee on Tuesday of next week, and Jefferson will be right back in action against a pesky Ottaville squad this Saturday. 50 to 37, I think we've seen the 2-3 defense that Crestview has implemented tonight. Over the course of the game, it's been very effective. Yeah, well, they've used their length, and especially with you know the length as Callie Gregory, Maya Etzler, you know some of those other players, you know those quick, um, you know pesky guards that they have that like to get in your face have made it very difficult for this Jefferson team. You know, forced a lot, probably a lot more turnovers than they're used to um, on the night. But you see, Coach Gregory, you know, just trying to instruct his girls. You know, we only got three minutes to go here. Let's take take time off the clock when we can. Only take good shots. So Crestview will have the basketball. Ellie Klein triggers it in. Ellie Klein is someone you want to have the ball in her hands. She only shoots 97% from the free throw line, 34 for 35. She has it right now. Goes to Etzler, over to Casey Gregory. As the Lady Knights look to play a little keep away now. Up 13. Klein with the basketball, looking to penetrate. Dish to Maya Etzler. Give Klein the dime, give Etzler the bucket. And with 2.30 to go, Jefferson really, really going to have to find something in a hurry, and it's going to be a challenge, Josiah. Yeah, Jefferson's had no answer for uh, Maya Etzler in the paint here, especially in the second half. You know, she's been finding just those gaps in this defense, and especially making those tough physical post moves. And now we see it here, Jefferson, good cut by Liv Lindemann. Ellie Klein just lets her go knowing it's pointless to give up a foul there. And now Crestview comes back on offense. Lindemann with the bucket. A nice pass by Lauren French to find her teammate on the back cut. Back into Maya Etzler against French. Oh, nice move. Tries to go over the rim. Toughest thing. She didn't use the window there. Doesn't get the bucket. Liv Lindemann in transition. And she attacks. And good things happen when you attack with the basketball. She draws the foul on Maya Etzler. That is Etzler's second personal foul. Lindemann going to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Second on this team percentage-wise from the free throw line at 79%. Yeah, well, an opportunity here for Jefferson to put some points on the board with no time coming off the clock. And as you said, they're going to have to score quick and often and get some stops against this Crestview offense. Second one goes up for Lindemann. She makes that one. And Coach Denise Lindemann, she's going to call timeout. We'll take one as well. 52-41 on the Lottex Jewelry scoreboard. Girls High School Basketball Northwest Conference style on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. We said coming into this game, the overall records for Crestview 14-2, Jefferson 14-1. Crestview lost to Ottawa Glandorf by two points, 47-45, and by Allen East in league play, 45-40. Jefferson, the one loss that they have was to Lima Bath, 42 to 16. Right now, it looks like Crestview is going to come away with the W and even things up in the NWC as far as losses are concerned with Crestview, Jefferson, and Grove having one loss apiece. Casey Gregory with the basketball. Full court man to man defense by Jefferson. Gregory to Gregory. Callie Gregory, double team. Liv Lindemann comes over to help out. Coach Mark Gregory is going to call a timeout. 119 to go. No quit in this Jefferson uh, team at all. Their nonverbals very positive, even though they're down 11. Josiah, uh, again, not surprised by that at all. No, and that comes from the coaching staff. Always being positive, always working um, with these players. 
you know, as you said, they're going to keep fighting until, you know, zero is left on the clock. You know, but good call there by Coach Gregory. Noticed his players were in a little bit of trouble with that trap. Jefferson coming out, trying to jump those passes. And now we're setting up some time, see if they can get some more time to come off the clock. Coach Gregory wants to keep the ball in the hands of Casey Gregory, Callie Gregory, and Ellie Klein. Casey at 71% from the free throw line. Callie, 83% from the free throw line. And as we said just a little bit ago, Ellie Klein at 97% from the free throw line. The problem, Jefferson only has one team foul. They've got to give four away in order to get to the free throw line. And more time's going to come off the clock before Crestview would get to the free throw line uh, in this situation. Yeah, and, and with that, Jefferson would be a little bit more aggressive. Try to go for steals. If it comes to be a foul, but they get the ball in pretty easily to Ellie Klein. As you said, want the ball in her hands if possible. Looks like they're going to call a body foul on Liv Lindemann. I like the thought, though. Tried to get over in position to take a charge on Callie Gregory. Unable to do so. Lindemann picks up her second personal foul of the game. 115 remaining on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Callie Gregory goes to the rack. She doesn't score it, and Jefferson gets the board. Down 11 with a minute five. They get it in the hands of Liv Lindemann. Goes down to the left-hander, and that's Mueller unable to come up with it. Lindemann with the offensive board. She misses. Josie Kowicki with the defensive rebound. Callie Gregory going to walk it across the timeout, and the Crestview faithful, they smell a victory here. Casey Gregory out to Ellie Klein. Yeah, it looks like Jefferson decided not to foul. Just going to put a little bit of pressure on this Crestview team. It's been a hard-fought basketball game. One point difference at the half, 24-23. But the second half, Crestview has dominated offensively to extend that lead to 11. And Jefferson is going to wave the white flag again. First time Jefferson has lost a league game since 2021 against these Crestview Lady Knights. Then 24 straight victories in between. We'll come back after the break. We'll look to wrap things up and maybe we'll grab a word with Coach Mark Gregory as well. High School Basketball Northwest Conference Lady Style on WOSN. Welcome back to Jefferson High School, where tonight the Crestview Lady Knights have defeated the Jefferson Wildcats by a final score of 52 to 41. Leading score for Crestview, 17 points for Callie Gregory. Leading score for Jefferson, Liv Lindemann with 15. What are some of the stats that, and what do they say for us tonight, Josiah? Yeah, for the the victors here with Crestview, you know, big thing shot 45 percent from the field tonight. You know, big, especially in the post, we saw that, you know, with uh, Maya Etzler and Carly, or Kaylee Gregory um, just really attacking the rim, especially in that second half. And that's, that was really the difference, 17 for 34, 50%, um, really coming from the paint on the night. And the big difference, free throws on the night. You know, Jefferson only shot six free throws, three for six, 50%. And then for the Crestview Knights, went 10 for 16 from the free throw line. So really dominated every facet of this game. Yeah, Jefferson hit the three in the first half. They had six threes at halftime. It was a one-point game. They only had two threes in the second half. And as you said, Crestview went inside and scored and got fouled, got to the free throw line. Jefferson unable to do so as effectively, and that was a big part of why Crestview came out on top. Josiah, it's been great working with you this evening. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back with Crestview's Mark Gregory to get his view on the victory for the Lady Knights. Welcome back to Jefferson High School one final time where tonight Crestview has defeated Jefferson 52 to 41 and it is our pleasure to have the winning coach of the Crestview Lady Knights, Mark Gregory. 
uh, with us this evening. Coach, I'll tell you, I didn't know if you would be sitting up here after the way this game started. You're down 11 to one. Uh, Callie Gregory has two fouls. I don't even think she had taken a shot yet, and your team responded. So that 11 to one, man, they bounced back quickly. You called a timeout, and they really responded. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we just tried to, to be real calm in the timeout and just say, hey, it's, we're not going to happen. This not going to happen with, with one play. It's not going to happen with one shot. It's got to be multiple stops here, you know, rebound the basketball, and then just get good possessions. And I thought uh, we had total buy-in uh, from the defensive end, from the offensive end. We had some nice, patient uh, possessions, and, and that's stuff that we've kind of worked on in practice. And, and uh, again, kudos to our girls for, for just buying into the plan and carrying it out and you know anytime you play a, a, a team of this caliber and a player of that caliber a lot of things you, you got to do things the right way and, and uh, execution was a big thing I had on my board uh, before we came out here tonight and, and I thought we executed on offense and we definitely executed on defense yeah let's talk about that defense in the buy-in your predominant man-to-man -man defense Liv Lindemann is someone you had to look at and stop. There's so many similarities. We talked about it during the broadcast between Liv Lindemann and Callie Gregory. But you go to a 2-3 zone, and that had a lot to do with her. Absolutely. Speak about that 2-3 zone. Yeah, you know, actually, to be honest with you, we started out in diamond uh, because we thought that that would give us the best coverage. And uh, and I think that was probably a good game plan. They, they, they hit some open shots early, and we didn't do a great job of rotating out. Um, and then we switched to the 2-3, and, and that was really good to us. But it was because we were so active on defense. I mean, we, we had girls flying at each other, which was something we talked about is we got to fly at those other girls that can shoot it. And uh, a couple times we, we didn't do that, but after after we, we did that a couple times, we, we, we got back in and, 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 and got those stops. But the thing that I think uh, really for me was the fact that we didn't give them multiple second, third chance opportunities, which they're so good at. Yeah, and one of the players for you that kept those multiple looks from occurring for Jefferson on the offensive glass was Maya Etzler. Absolutely. Maya had a great night. She scored 16 points for you. Very active on the boards. Her best game of the year thus far? Uh, absolutely. She, she played so well tonight on both ends of the floor. She rebounded the ball. She posted hard. She uh, put the ball off the glass, which we've been talking about here really recently. And uh, just so proud of her. You know, it, it, it's, it's not been easy here. Just just all the little things coming back after a year off. And, and uh, I am just so proud of her for uh, her efforts tonight. But again, we had such a, such a great team effort tonight from everybody. Everybody stepped up tonight. Maya was good. Casey was good. Ellie was good. Good. I mean, we just our, our whole group. Um, Kennedy Kreider comes in and just gives us good minutes out there. And Haley came in and did a great job. I'm just, I'm, I'm just uh, so proud. Yep. So proud as a coach. And you should be because again, you have a tremendous amount of respect for this Jefferson sure. Wildcat Ball Club and Coach Denise Lindemann. They've had 24 wins in a row in the Northwest Conference. Mm -hmm. You improved to five and one. They fall to four and one. Puts you in a tie for first place. Motivation because they beat you the last two years, and motivation because Allen East picked up a win against your Lady Knights here a week ago. Uh, this was a big game. Yeah, we, we I, I talked a little bit about, uh, you know, Allen East had their back against the wall when they came to our place, and I think we took it for granted a little bit that night and just thought, eh, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. We'll get back in here, and it just never happened. And But, but again, I think Allen East just played so hard, and they, they, they knew that, that, hey, we can't lose this game. Well, that's how tonight was for us. We, I told our girls, we gotta, we got to win this game. Our back's against the wall. Now we got to be in that spot. So, uh, and again, they, they took everything we talked about in practices, pregame here before we came here tonight. I mean, again, they, they just took everything that we, we talked about and carried it out. Absolutely. A great game tonight between Jefferson and Crestview. That's typically the case. And Crestview with the win improves to 15-2. and two. And as we said, 5-1 and one in the Northwest Conference. Jefferson falls to 14-2, and 4-1 and one in conference action. We want to thank Athletic Director Jefferson Kent Smelzer. I want to thank Jacob O'Neill, our camera person. And also, he will be editing tonight's game for us. And I want to thank Coach Mark Gregory for coming up and speaking with us. My wingman, Josiah Stober. And until next time, may all of your jumpers hit nothing but the bottom of the net. For Josiah Stover, I'm David Bowen. Have a good night, everybody.